Alright, welcome to episode 4, where we will be working with strings, and uh, basically any kind of stretchable uh, wave that we can use to uh, create a loop to benefit us with our pattern. This keeps changing. I'm sorry about that. Uh, every time I hit the record button, I seem to be pressing a shortcut to change this, apparently, but... Okay, so uh, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and locate a string. Now, first thing you want to do is go ahead and close drum kit 1 if you have that open. Make sure you're in packs. Uh, don't really matter about being in legacy. We're going to open up orchestral, and we're going to go into strings. And uh, here's a bunch of different strings we can choose from. There's a lot more than this in the, in the default pack. I believe there's some in legacy, but we're going to go ahead and focus with these. Let's go ahead and hear what they sound like. Is this? I don't want to. I want to make sure this isn't going to blast in your ears. Where is my volume? There it is. That's good enough. Well, uh, which one sounds good? One thing I may may note is the uh, the L on here is actually what side it means it's lacking on. So if you look up in here, you'll notice that the left uh, the left ear, left speaker is lacking. You can kind of see that the right one is dominating a bit at some points. And uh, that means that's what side the treble is mainly on. It's not on, I mean, sorry. The treble is mainly on the right one rather than the left. We can go ahead and uh, manage that in a minute. So let's go ahead and pick one. That one's, that one's pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and do the mixo underscore e3 l o g g o g g file apparently it's not a wave it's weird let's just go ahead and do the mixo e2 we're gonna go ahead and uh, right click and add, open a new sampler let's go ahead and name this string and okay I spelled that right what color should we make the string let's make it a dark kind of pale yellow ew that looks nasty let's go ahead and keep it though so uh that's our beat now the first thing I've learned about strings is to put the volume about halfway, in the you know facing directly up because these things are loud, and uh, we don't want that. So if we're gonna go ahead and keep that, no, we're not gonna put it on a solo. Let's go ahead and open. Now that we've selected, selected in the in the uh, uh, step sequencer, and let's go ahead and open up the uh, piano roll. Here's 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 a very good introduction on the on the function of where are you at. You're in view somewhere. There it is. Shadow. What shadow does, and it's not letting me see it. Okay, that's weird. I think it's shadow. That's odd. That's very odd. I th I'm, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. I swear. That's weird. Anyway, shadow is uh, something where you can enable to see other, if it's within the same pattern like this, like there's other ones of uh, piano roll editing inside the same inside the same pattern, you can see the shadow of where they are if you want to get precision with it. You have one that's for one string, and you have a different one, you want to edit it around the same note um, pitch, then you can use the shadow so you can go ahead and see them and uh, stuff. So let's go ahead and use our string now that we have the uh, string selected. Let's check it out with C5. Oh, that's really loud. That's that's a lot better. It's, let's, okay, let's stick with D number 3 and D3. I don't know the, the correct terminology for this. I learned this program all by myself over the years, so I don't know any correct terminology. I just go by with what I see. I know this is sharp or flat, one or the other, but I don't want to get I don't want to say it wrong and confuse you. So I know it's sharp or flat. I'll figure it out by my uh, I'll figure it out online later, and I'll let you know. And so I don't sound as newbie. I'm not really a noob at this. I just don't know what the name of the uh, correct terminology is, and I feel kind of bad. I'm not. I was lazy enough to not learn it, but whatever. So, if you want to go ahead and use a string, first thing we want to note before we go ahead and place it in here is when you when you select it and it opens up the uh, properties menu, which I should move over a little bit. Down here in the wave, you'll see these, <clears throat> these red lines, and then you probably can't see it too well right now. Maybe, yeah. If you see, I don't know if you can see because I know my video does not capture the mini lines within this, but they are there. 
But uh, if, if you can see these two dark red lines, it's, it's actually the loop, which means when you go ahead and go in here and you select something and you place it, when you stretch it, it'll actually play for that long rather than just play it once. Like, here's an example of me placing it with a small. Sorry, let me go ahead and disable that make it a solo, my bad. See that? Only played for a split second, but if I stretch it halfway... See that? That's how you, uh, that's what the stretch function is for. It's for anything with a loop. And if something doesn't have a loop, we can configure it, but I'll show you how to do that later. This one has a preset loop, and we're going to keep it with that for a while. So what we're going to do is keep that note there and then put it on D3, the same note. And whatever size you have the last one, it's going to copy it to that size. It's not going to make it small. You have to stretch it. So you're going to have to work with that a little bit. But uh, if we go ahead and do that and re-enable everything, let's put solo on that make them all on again. It should do a high note and a lower note. And it's a little bit loud, though. Like I said, strings are pretty loud compared to everything else. And overthrow the rest. I want to make sure it's not doing that. So we're going to put it all the way to the left. Still a little too soft. Let's, let's uh, raise it as we go. About 28%. See at the bottom right there? 28%. Let's try to keep it at uh, let's keep it at 28%. And now that we've got that, you'll notice also in here. Let's go ahead and solo this once more. It's very choppy right here. It immediately goes to the next to the next uh, to the next pitch. Watch. You can hear that. It immediately stops and goes straight to the next string. But there's a way to fix that. A little bit. Not not a huge fix, but a very good fix fix. If you go ahead and go into your pattern and you go and select it into the properties, right where it says declicking, this little section right here, if you click this drop down, and this is a bunch of different kind of fades you can do. Very, very, very small fades, but you can increase them to be better. I prefer crossfade, because if you do crossfade, it should sound a bit better now. Hear that? It's slightly still choppy. I didn't know why I enabled that. Slightly a bit choppy, but it's a lot better than the immediate stop and restart. Hear that? But here's another way we can also enable this. If you zoom in all the way we can get, you can do very precise editing. Like this. Very, very precise editing. If we put it halfway, you can't see this line right here, but there is a line here. At about 118, about 118 at the bottom, if you have your thing enabled, you'll see a line. I'm pretty sure it's the same spot for you. 118, there's a line. You can't see it very well in the recording because it's very, very dim. But if you stretch it all the way... In other words, if you stretch it like this and you stretch it one over, just go ahead and zoom all the way in because you have to be all the way in to do precise editing. Also, there's a setting up here called Enable Notes slash Clip Groups. Make sure that's disabled or else you won't be able to do precise editing. When you're in precise editing, try to get it in the middle the best you can, and maybe we can make it sound a little better. That's good, because what that does is when it's overlapping, it makes it so when the, when, the, when the note starts and plays, it actually has a little bit to fade out, and while this one's fading in, that one's fading out. So it's fading out the note, and it's fading in the note around the same area, so it's not as choppy, and it doesn't just fade out and fade back in. So that's pretty good. That's a good little quick tip on how to make strings sound a little better. There's better ways how to do it with plugins, but we'll get to that later. So now that we have a note, two notes for strings, we're going to go ahead and uh, see how this sounds one more time so I can figure out what we're going to do next. Uh-oh, something's wrong. You hear that? Maybe, maybe doing the overlapping doesn't work as well in this specific pattern. Let's go ahead and disable that one more time and check it out. Maybe I can make it sound a little better, though. Maybe if you put it in the middle, make it half the middle. Let's try that. Now, it seems to be picking it up pretty highly. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We're going to go ahead and keep it like this. It's hidden very well, so we don't have to worry about it. You can't really hear it too well. You can, but it's not as strong. So we'll go ahead and keep it like this. It's a very basic beat we're doing, just a, like a let's play kind of thing. Let's create together, whatever. But it's not. it doesn't need to be extremely fancy quite yet. We'll get to all the fancy stuff later, but what basic concept is we got a we got ourselves a note here, a long note and uh, two of them actually, and we've got a string. 
which is good. Now you know what stretching can do. Stretching note in this. And uh, when we got my 20, 10 minutes, I'm going to make this a little longer, a little more informative. It was a very quick... Hmm. Well, let's see what we can do here. What could we do? I don't really know what we can do. I don't think there's much more we can explain here with this. This might be a very quick episode. Ten minutes? Very quick, depending on the rest. Oh, here's something you want to see right now. Here's something very important. Very quick tip. When the loop points are there, and you actually see the little red lines, you might not be able to... You'll see them on yours. You might not be able to see them on mine, because like I said, the video might not be picking it up. But there are two red lines here that simulate where the loop is. Basically, when you start, when you start the note, it starts from the beginning and plays, but as soon as it gets to this point, if it's a stretched note, it will play all the way to that point and continue to repeat here and continue over and over. That's what a loop point is. And if you don't have loop, use loop points enabled, it will not use the loop. Watch what happens when I disable the loop points and try to play it again. Let's make it a solo. What a bad example. Apparently though, the wave is a lot longer than our notes. So what we're going to do is get rid of this and stretch this a lot longer. Let's try it out. Right there. See that? I didn't press stop. Watch, I won't press stop. You can even see it playing. I'm not pressing it. It just stops. Because the note is was... Also, you'll see if I press it, it plays the entire wave. Because loop points aren't enabled. When you enable loop points, it plays it for as long as you hold the mouse. And it can play forever if you hold it forever, because it's continuously looping. Loop points are very important. And if you want to edit loop points, how to make your own personal loop points within the wave and edit it, well, it'll be a much... Mm, I could do it now. It's a bit working with a plugin called Edison, but it's a bit more. I don't know if you have Edison. I'll get to it anyway. I got, you know what, why not? Let's go ahead and do it. I only have 12 minutes. I want to at least get at least about 15 or more. So uh, let's go ahead and do Edison and learn how to do, how to create our own loop points and do that. So first thing we want to do is make sure we always save. So if we mess something up, so if I'd save, it should save. And now if I mess anything up, we can always revert back. Always remember to save often. I've learned that in this program. How much work you put into stuff, save often. If you have the demo version, just continue to follow along and see if you're interested in that. I don't know if Edison is in the demo version, but we will find out, I guess. If you don't have this feature, then just ignore it and just look forward to what you can do if you have the full version, if it's not available. I don't know. I had the demo a long time ago. I don't remember how it is. So let's go ahead and get to this. Inside, when you click on any of the waveforms, you can do this with any of them, you see the waveform here. And this one has a loop point, but let's say it didn't have a loop point. It didn't have these red marks, and we had it enabled. We couldn't use it. We're going to have to create it. So what we're going to do is right-click on the wave and hit Edit. It's going to load. And now it opens a program called Edison within the program. It's a plugin, I think. It's a plugin, I think. Anyway, it opens up this, and you can see it's a wave. If you're familiar with wave editors or anything, you'll know what this is. But if you don't, we'll run it by later because I have another program I have to go through called WavePad Sound Editor. We'll get to that later in another episode, probably way down the road. But uh, here's the wave. Now, see these. you can probably see the red lines now if you didn't see them before. These red lines are very bold. If we want to be able to edit our own wave, I mean, edit our own loop, we're going to have to figure out how to get to the loop. And what we're going to do is create a loop. Right here, it says tune loop slash slit loop. Set, that's a tongue twister. Tune loop slash set loop. Not, not really. I'm just done. Let's go ahead and select that. And make sure you hit accept. And it'll automatically tune a loop for you. And you can see here that it automatically tuned a loop, and it's red. Now, this is, I'm going to go ahead and hit that again and it's going to play and I'll stop it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn that down a little bit so I can talk for a second. You'll see that the uh, the, the loop is uh, constantly playing because it's letting you, you tune it. I'm going to turn it up just a bit. Now let's go ahead, uh, let's put it up a little more. I'm going to go ahead, you can change the length, make it longer, you can see that it's getting longer. You can use the mouse wheel or hold the, the left mouse and drag to do this. But you can't, it won't update unless you uh, de-click to have it update. But let's make it really, really short. Wait, is that really short? Yeah, it's really short. And uh, the tension, I believe, is how loud it'll be. Let's make it not as tension. Oh, a little tension. Snap. 
turn the snap off. It's probably the best to turn the snap off. Uh, I think everything's good. So when you got it, I don't know if you can hear me at all there. If not, then I'll put an annotation or something. Hit accept whenever you're satisfied with what you got. And how you navigate this, I didn't tell you. You can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And when this red is here, we don't want to do the next part until you deselect it. So you want to deselect all the red. I think you can right click and hit edit. I think you can deselect. Um, maybe you can't. I don't think you can. Well, the best way I think to do it is to just drag all the way to the end and then drag the other side and until it's gone. Now that we have our own set, if you, if you can see the wave, the, the loop points here, you will be able to see the next one. It's not there yet because we haven't updated it. The next part we have to do is drag it in there so we have our new instrument and we can also edit. You see this big, here, this isn't a better example. You see this big empty space that I just highlighted of uh, extra room? I want to get rid of that. It won't, it, now anything you do in here will not affect the instrument here. You're just editing it after you've placed it, so it's not messing up anything. So if you delete something and drag it, it's not gone. It's not editing the actual file, it's editing what you've, it's, you know, it's like a picture. If you put a picture, if you copy a picture into something and edit it there, you're only editing the copied picture, not the real one. This is just a copy of the instrument we're using, not the real one, so don't worry about it. So if you, if we zoom in a little bit, and uh, get this precision and select all the way up to there, right click, hit edit, and delete. We'll get rid of all that extra space we don't need. And now that we've done that, we have our entire instrument. If we go ahead and play it, it only plays the loop. But if we undo the loop, which is this button right here, this infinite, sorry, this infinite button, if you go ahead and post it, it'll play the entire thing. But if you hit loop, it's gonna, it's gonna do it as if it was in the piano roll. You see that? Which means, in the piano roll, if you started a note, it'd go here and it continue. That's exactly a great example of what it does. You can see it. goes all the way and then goes to the loop. And you can also see how your loop's going to sound if you stretch it as in this program. It's a very handy program. There's a lot more we can do. But first, the last thing we need to do right now is drag it in there so we have our new loop. So you see where it says right here, there's a little button. has a little arrow and a little paper or whatever. Drag, copy, sample, selection. What you want to do is make sure you click and hold and drag this into the string. Can you see that? Now look down here. The little extra area is gone, and we also have our new loop. So we can go ahead and exit out of that, exit out of this. Oh, is our loop points enabled? Yes, it is. And now you see it renamed it. You also got to watch out for that, because it will rename it. So if you have something, you want to make sure you rename it back. So there we go. Now let's go ahead and hear what our sound thing sounds like now. I didn't put my volume back up. It's a little better, actually. I think it sounds better, because the loop point has changed, and it sounds a lot more... Uh, better. I don't know how to explain it. I think we can make it a little louder. I'm not sure. Let me go ahead and enable everything. What if I put the shake down a little bit? Yeah, there we go. Go ahead and put the shake down to 66%. A little less. No, don't, don't worry about hitting that. Well, that's a great example of uh, how to use strings and how to edit them functionally. It's a little complicated with how to make strings sound good. You can get really complicated and make several of them overlapping each other and everything. See that? No, I'm not going to do that. It sounds great, I know. I know. It's probably really cool. I wouldn't... You can keep it if you want. I don't mind. But, uh... And save that real quick. Always save. And uh, you can do other stuff like that, make it sound a lot better, tune the strings, make it, you know, you can do a lot of stuff with strings. Strings are very, I find strings very fun to, to use in this program. Once you get the beat, I think the beat's the easiest one to do, the string. The strings are the hardest to master, but when you do it, you feel great. So in the next episode, we will actually split this up. We will split this up, and we're going to place it in the playlist and actually make a song out of it. So until next time.